Hey guys, check out that baby fawn. See it? Look at that little cutie, isn't that a cutie? What's up? There it goes. I wasn't paying much attention coming up here this morning because I almost wasn't even gonna make a video, but I got all the way up here and sat down and was fumbling with my wife's iPhone here. And I looked up and there were like three or four deer there staring at me. So when I, I said hi, they ran into the woods. And then that little fawn come, came by. It was like a doe with three fawns, it looked like. They might come back out. So anyway, I'm glad you guys at least got to see the, the fawn. Um, good morning, welcome to Homesteading Off the Grid. I just said I wasn't gonna make a video this morning because I didn't really have anything to talk about. Um, and this is often the case, but I was going through some comments this morning, so I'm gonna talk about comments and I'm going to talk to a veteran named Mark Lucier, L-U-S-S-I-E-R. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Mark. Um, Cause this is really, I just wanna, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, I'd like to sit down with you and um, drink coffee. Well, Mark, I'm gonna sit here right now with you and drink coffee. I have this really cool coffee mug that we thought was defective. My wife bought this for me for Father's Day last year. You see the top of it's black and the bottom there's a picture. That's us at the Chocolate Hills in Bahal in the Philippines. Uh, there are these mountains that look like chocolate gumdrops, so they call them the Chocolate Hills. There are 1,776 of them. It's easy to remember because that was the year of our revolution. But um, she ordered this mug and and she, she sent in the picture and so we get this mug in the mail. I get it, I unwrap it on Father's Day and it's solid black and we're upset because we thought it was defective. So we just set it in the cupboard for a while and one day, one morning there were no clean coffee mugs and so I grabbed this black one and I filled it up and what it is, it's temperature activated. I poured the coffee in and the picture showed up and the top half has the same picture. It took us a month to figure that out, gosh. Okay, so anyway, see? You guys thought I was smart, I just proved you wrong. All right, Mark, so here's our little morning conversation here over coffee. Mark commented on a video yesterday that he has commented before on my videos. Uh, he's a fellow veteran and he commented to thank me for my service. And he, he uh, but people bashed him, they came on, they bashed him, they bashed me. So he said he was scared to comment. Uh, for the last few days, but he finally wanted to comment again. Um, Mark, I'm just going to share with you something I've noticed, and and I am not talking down to anyone when when um, I say these things. But here's a couple of things I've noticed. I got home from Iraq in 2009. I was there 2008, 2009. Got home the second half of 2009. You know, a lot of people say veterans don't talk about their service. People who were in war don't talk about their experiences. Um, if they are talking about it, they're lying uh, because people that did those things don't talk about it. Um, I've been accused on this channel of stolen valor. I better stop. Um, what's interesting is one of the, I mean, and, and I'm gonna get to reading comments here in a minute, but somebody who accused me of stolen valor, stolen valor and who had never served in the military and I'm gonna go to jail for this. Um, on the video about the annoying neighbor with the crayon, the same person said, well, I look at you, you're probably getting 100% VA disability, which I'm not. So how are you any different? Which is it, guy? I, I either, I mean, how do you get disability or anything from the VA if you never served? Or did I, I mean, what is it? So Mark, my point here is, um, and people who say these things, veterans do talk about their military service. People who are in combat do talk about their experiences. They just don't talk about it with you. Why is that? Do I really need to explain that past this point? Um, when I first came home, people would be like, what was it like, what was it like? And I'd tell them some stories. Uh, and they'd listen to your stories. And then they'd look at you and they'd say, well, that never happened. And you would be like, why, why do you say that never happened? And they would say, well, because you wouldn't tell me about it if you did. Um, you know, once you hear that enough times, you just stop telling those stories. But, and I'm at that point pretty much. But when you, when you uh, run into other veterans like Mark, Mark, if Mark were here with me in person drinking coffee, we'd be talking about our experiences all morning long. 
um, because we talk about it with other veterans predominantly and it's not because we're trying to hide anything we're ashamed of anything it's just we don't want to be told we're liars and we don't want to be judged um, here's the story you know for those of you who have deployed um, you'll understand this for those who you who have not you might not but a lot of folks watching this channel have never been in the military but uh, I know you have beautiful minds you're open-minded and I know you'll relate to this story even though you never had this experience um, some of the times when you're on a deployment <clears throat> the closest calls you have have nothing to do with combat there's no firefights there's no explosions it's just accidents happen I mean we uh, we did convoy security and we had, um, I was mostly in what's called an ASV, Armored Security Vehicle. It's like the, uh, it was originally, I think, a United Nations uh, riot control vehicle. Um, but sometimes we'd be in other trucks, and there was this uh, MRAP, an up-armored MRAP. No, no, it wasn't an MRAP. It was a Humvee, up-armored Humvee, um, that the the back axle was warped or something, but you'd go down the road, and once you got up to a certain speed, it would start going ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. And we always had this fear that one of the tires was gonna come off or one of the wheels, and then if it did, we were gonna, you know, get killed. So we would take it to the, to the mechanics, and we had wonderful mechanics. These were great people. And uh, we said, this is the problem. And so they'd take it out on, on post and they'd test drive it, but they never got the ba do ba do ba do we got. And the reason why is because on post, you weren't allowed to go over, I think, 25 miles an hour. It might have been 15, but it was a slow speed. And this didn't start happening until we reached 30 miles an hour or faster. So we're at the end of the deployment. And, and guys, and those of you who have deployed know this, you reach a point to where your mind kind of throws all logic out the window. And I know I've pushed Ayn Rand and objectivism and logic that's easy to do over here in the comforts of the United States where people aren't trying to kill you on a daily basis. But when you get into a situation that makes no sense, I mean, there is no sense about people trying to kill each other because they think differently or they have different ideologies. And you might be saying, well, then why do you do it? And, and there's no way to answer that question because those of you who have never been called to serve will never understand. Check out this big giant blue herring here. I don't know if you're seeing it, but this guy comes along every other morning or so and lands in our pond there he goes I hope you're seeing this all right I hope I got that this is like sitting in a nature reserve up here I love it um, and very soon I'm gonna be up here full-time you guys know what that means I'm not gonna give any details right now but anyway um, there I go getting derailed again yeah, my point was, why would you go in the first place? Why would you serve? If you've never been called to serve, you simply would never understand. So I don't think there's any way to really answer that question. It's like um, people ask, what is love? Um, only people who have ever been in love know. Uh, Stephen King, my favorite author, wrote in one of his books about how um, the most important things to say are the hardest because words diminish them. I think this is a good example of that. So anyway... <clears throat> We were out one night and the TC truck commander, E5, we were, we were at that point towards the end of the deployment to where, I mean, we just weren't thinking rationally and the, the tire was going ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. And so he told the driver, he said, put the pedal to the metal and let's run this thing hard until the tire falls off. So that's what happened. And I was gunning and I was on top and I was holding on like we were at a rodeo and we were going down the road, I don't know how fast. I mean, I look back at this now and I can see how unsafe this was. But we were right, with the dump, the dump, the dump. Tire goes flying off into the Arabian desert and uh, truck starts fishtailing and the driver who was a, a female, a young woman in her 20s, man, she was just driving like Mario Andretti. She was steering into the turns and we were going so fast when that tire fell off, we probably slid down the road three quarters of a mile before the truck came to a stop and we're just, fish telling and sliding and laughing. I mean, you reach to a point to where when you're in the middle of something, you know, you laugh, something as dangerous as that. So, um, the, we finally got our truck fixed. I mean, after that, they had to replace the tire. We never had that problem again. So this is only the second time I've ever shared this story. And I know I'm sharing it with thousands of people right now, but I shared this story shortly after I'd come home with somebody who at that time in my life was very important to me. And, um, 
this person looked at me and told me how stupid we were, how dumb we were, about how they would have never done that, how we all should have received Article 15s, and they would have never done that. And Well, guess what? I never talked about my military experience or wartime services with that person again. And this is how it comes to be. Uh, and, and Mark, you've probably noticed this. Um, another example, you know, I, I'm almost finished with the job I hate that makes me miserable. Um, I will be finished very soon. And there's a, I have a friend there and I'm going to give her a shout out. Her name's Danielle. Uh, what's up, Danielle? Danielle is bad. You know what? She's a young lady in her early to mid thirties. Um, she was in Iraq. She was an NCO. She got her neck broken in Iraq and she worked six and seven days a week doing a physical job. And she has a, I hope I'm not embarrassing her here telling too much about her, but this girl has a biology degree from the University of Virginia. Uh, she's an amazing person. So we, she was in Iraq, I was in Iraq. And actually the first day I spent um, out of training on this, this job, that won't be my job soon, I got to spend with Danielle. And um, I got to know her quite well that first day. And I told her it's easy to remember her name because my son Daniel, in the Philippines, it's pronounced Danielle. The, the female version of that name is Daniela. And so sometimes I'll catch myself here calling him Danielle and he'll get embarrassed with people around and say, Daniel, Daniel, because that's the American version of the name. So anyway, um, Dan, I was talking to another person at work one day that, that I've talked to quite a bit, and Danielle comes up to me and she mentions something about a part of my past, part of my life in passing. And this other person looks at me and says, I didn't know about that. And I said, okay. And he says, why didn't you ever tell me about that? And I, and I said, well, why would I? And he's like, well, you told Danielle. And I said, look, no offense, but um, Danielle and I have kind of been to the same place and, and done some of the same things that... Uh, people who haven't been there and haven't done them just can't relate to. I, I didn't mean to offend you by not telling you about this part of my past, but it's something that's very personal. And again, Mark and other veterans, these are the things that you, you know, you've done it too. We've shared these things with other people that don't have these experiences only to have them tell us how they would have done it differently, how we handled that the wrong way, how they would have never done this, they would have never done that. Folks, I've learned that if you haven't been in a particular stage, particular situation if you haven't walked that mile in that man or woman's shoes uh, man or woman's shoes you don't know what you might do I learned a few years ago to stop saying never and it's some of these experiences I had that made me stop saying never um, so Mark I'm going to use a term here because I want to help you and I want to help other veterans and I don't use this term in any sort of derogatory way towards people who are not veterans. Some of the biggest support I've ever gotten in my post-military experience are from people who are not veterans. And they've said to me, I can't relate to what you did, but I'm thankful that you did. I appreciate what you did. And I'm thankful to those people. And those people you're watching, you're going to hear this. This is not geared towards you. Okay. Um, because you don't make the comments. Some of the people who suffer from this term, I've kind of come up with I think I've come up with myself. Other people might use it. You don't suffer from this. But Mark, I've kind of coined a term called veteran envy. Um, veteran envy. And, and, and I'm not, oh, look at me, you wish you were me. Um, I'm not saying that. But it makes me wonder if part of you does kind of maybe, you know, there are people out there who, who never served. And I have no disrespect towards people who never served. We're all called to do different things. I know there are people who wanted to serve but didn't because they had families. Yes, we had families too, and some of us came home to see, well, we're not going to get off on that topic. But, um, you know, we all make our own decisions, and we all make different decisions. And I know I've made a lot of mistakes, but I feel that most of the decisions I've made were the right decisions to make for me. And if you made the decision not to serve, um, that is the decision that you feel is best for you. You have nothing to apologize for. You do not need to apologize because you never served in the military. You do not need to apologize because you did serve in the military, but you never deployed. That was out of your control. If you served during peacetime, like after Vietnam and before the, the wars in the Middle East, um, 
you could have gone to war at any time, but you didn't. And um, you've got no control over that. You have no reason to feel guilty or be ashamed. I work with some wonderful people. I have wonderful neighbors who never spent a day in the military. These people have nothing to be ashamed of. They have nothing to apologize for. That just wasn't for you. It wasn't your thing. It didn't happen. But there are some people who, who are in this category who never served, who I think regret it because they kind of wish they had. And those emotions kind of come out sideways on other veterans um, or, or on veterans because they're not veterans. Or maybe, maybe they are, I use the word envious, maybe they are a little jealous because, you know, they're out, they're with their buddy who's a veteran and they see people saying thank you for your service and they feel a little envious because they're not receiving any sort of praise for having done what their buddy who's a veteran did. Mark, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. And it, it's easy for these folks to bash you on a social media platform because um, that, they don't, they're behind a computer screen. They're not revealing who they really are. Um, a lot of their accounts are fake. Uh, that's why I call Facebook fake book. I mean, one of the reasons. But um, ignore these comments, Mark. If you ever want to reach out to me or reach out to our channel, do it. And that goes for everybody. You know, ignore the trolls. We do. Somebody was commenting, yeah, I said this and you removed my comment. Um, I mentioned yesterday, we don't remove comments. If you use hate speech, we report you and you probably have your account closed. But um, I can't speak so much for YouTube on this because we're still kind of relatively new with the level where we are with YouTube now. But we were on Facebook for many years. And we know that, um, well, for example, Facebook, the social media platforms will remove comments you know if you're coming on here and you're blasting and let's say you're some guy that suffers from uh maybe veteran envy what i call it and mark comes on and he says thanks for your service i was in iraq and blah 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 and somebody comes on and says oh stolen valor stolen valor you you never served because you know people who were in the military never talk about it you're a liar i hate you um the social media platforms will often remove those comments because they're just mean and appropriate so it's not us uh Again, if it, you know, I mentioned the other day in a video here in Charlottesville, people are very fond of yard signs and I'll read them. And uh, some of them are humorous and comical, but there's two that I agree with firmly and they're very simple. Uh, and I don't think you need to be on the left or on the right or in the middle to agree with these two yard signs. One says, and this one affected me in a big way, and I actually started doing it in the yard of this person who put this sign up. I'm going to tell you what the it is. Um, this person had a sign up that says simply, practice random acts of kindness. And I kind of chuckled the first time I saw it. Oh, how sweet, how nice. This person's lovey-feely, loves everybody. Um, well, you know, I go by this yard every day, every day, every day, and I'm seeing a sign, practice random acts of kindness. And one day... I just said, you know what? That's a pretty good philosophy to have. It's simple, practice random acts of kindness. Can I do that one time today and then just keep moving forward with life? And this particular person has a dog. And it's a big dog. And it's a friendly dog. And uh, she keeps... Um, this person's name is Emily. I know it because I would see it on the cover of the of the items I deliver to this person. And... That's a very special name to me for a very special reason. So I started calling this dog, Emily's dog. And, and so that day I decided my random act of kindness that I would practice is I would walk into that yard. Um, this dog was no threat. I mean, it'd stand up sometimes and shake its tail. And I'd say, hey, Emily's dog, start calling it Emily's dog. But I would never go pet it. But one day I said, my random act of kindness today is going to be to walk over there and spend a couple minutes with Emily's dog. So... For the rest of the time I had this job, which I won't have here very soon, anytime I was in that particular part of town, I would go past there and I would go over and I'd stop and I'd pet Emily's dog and I'd talk to Emily's dog and Emily's dog would roll over on her back and or his back I, and I'd rub Emily's dog's belly and I saw him out walking once when I was in a different part of the neighborhood and I said, hey, Emily's dog. And the woman was like, how do you know my name? And I'm like, look at me. She's like, oh, yeah, you know everybody's name. I'm like, yeah, because, you know, how I was dressed and what I was carrying. Um, so anyway, and then there's another sign that I agree with, 
and this is in a lady's yard named Lisa, and it's in several other people's yards. And I'm going to tell you about Lisa here in a couple days. Uh, something happened that's very important to the story that I'll be telling soon. But um, Lisa has a sign in her yard, as does a lot of other people, that says, Hate has no home here. And I just think hate has no home anywhere. And so that's just a simple statement that I think we can all agree with. Um, in a video the other day, I was talking this way and somebody commented and said, oh, wow, I thought you were blah, blah, blah like me, but then they called me a snowflake and they're like, uh, if you throw yourself out there as a snowflake, be prepared for what's going to come. And then there was all these people bashing and hating and we were laughing. My wife and I, we laugh. We've been in social media for many years. Um, we went through the period where we wouldn't read comments and we turned them off. And it, now we're at the point to where comments like this don't bother us, but we read comments because comments like Mark's are important and we want to reach out. These are the people we want to communicate with, not the trolls who, you know, you like the way I think until you find out I'm not going to hate an entire group of people for any particular reason. I don't think anything like you and we never did. So anyway, Mark, uh, my fellow veterans, I hope this helped. Um, Again, no disrespect to anybody who didn't serve. You know, while we're off doing what we do, folks back here need to keep things running. And uh, you guys, society is one big machine. Every part is equally important. Um, and not, no, not, well, I'm going to stop right there before I say too much. But you have nothing to be ashamed of because you never served. You have nothing to be ashamed of because you never deployed. The decisions you've made in your life are the decisions that you probably felt were best for you. And you, you there's no reason to be envious of people who made other decisions and, and, and achieved other things or did other things in life. Um, we don't judge you if you think we did uh, or we do. I mean, I don't. I don't judge you. I don't look at anybody who didn't serve and think of you as less than me. Like I said, I've gotten some of the, the biggest support and the most help from people who never served. So... But don't take it out on my buddy Mark because he did. If you've got issues, if you're one of the people that, like I said, I, I, I kind of coined this phrase years ago after witnessing this type of backlash. You tell somebody your experiences and they call you a liar because they, oh, if you actually did that, you would have never talked about it. Um, if you suffer from in, uh, veterans envy, um, don't take it out on Mark. I mean, that's your issue. Own it. Get past it. We don't think less of you because you never served, or at least I don't. So anyway, that's my ramble for this morning. I hope it might have helped somebody. Um, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, please subscribe to our channel. We want to thank each and every one of you who have. We're averaging like a 1,000 new subscribers a day, and uh, we appreciate that. Here very soon, the videos are going to be predominantly homesteading stuff-based, gardening, whatnot. We're going to share a little bit more of our lives with you, like yesterday when my beautiful wife cut my darling son's hair. That was fun. And in, in the comment section, we learned we need to get either wrap a towel around him or go to Walmart and get one of those cloaks for that sort of thing. And we're going to next time. Um, so, so we learn as much from you guys as you guys learn from us, probably more. Um, and that's how this works. This is how it's supposed to work. This is a beautiful thing. It's not so we can come on here and, you know, bash Mark because he mentions his military service and you want to call him out and call him a liar. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you for your service. Um, thank everybody for their service. People thank me. I always thank them back. So that's enough of my rambles. I got to go make my wife's coffee. She's probably awake and here soon it'll be time to snuggle with my son. So as always, I'm going to give you a parting shot of the homestead and we'll see you next time.